the scripture cathedral. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Uh, this is Pastor Donnell Long, pastor of the Scripture Cathedral, and I want to welcome everybody on tonight. You're, you're absolutely, positively, uh, you can call, or I shouldn't say call, you can, yeah, you can call some of your friends and share this, uh, this uh, discussion tonight with them. At Thursday night, the largest prayer meeting in the nation's capital. <laughs> Remember that? Or, or prayer at the cathedral. But, uh, you know, times have changed, so join now. Um, and uh, let me say this before I move on. Uh, Sunday was our first Sunday back in the building. Amen. Yes. And listen, before I talk about the spiritual aspect of it, I want to commend all of the, the workers around the Scripture Cathedral that made everything run smooth. Amen. Let me see. Uh, let me let me thank um, the nurses unit. Uh, they did a fantastic job. Uh, let me thank thank the deacons uh, and uh, the ministers. Uh, some of the deacons and ministers were uh, doing the drive-through prayer. Let me thank those. Let me thank the hospitality group. Our young people did an awesome job in seating people and making sure. Everybody self-distance, um, and 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 uh, we said we were going to hold up to a hundred people, but God blessed us with a little bit more than that, oh, yeah. and we still self-distance. Yes, now, if I can get, uh, if it's possible, director, let me know if it's possible. If I can get uh, our cameraman, brother Couch, just to take a shot of how the sanctuary is set up, you will see that we are. Uh, we've blocked off every other pew, and you will see perhaps tape on the top of the pew where we were setting families together and single people were sitting by themselves. So we, we, we did a, a superb job in making sure that we stayed self distance Everyone wore their mask. Amen. Um, and listen, this is the most surprising thing. Uh, because, I mean, in the community which I live, or the people that I'm around, sometimes you hear com uh, complaints, but I didn't hear not one complaint. Yes, sir. Everything went smooth. There's something they call smooth sailing. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So we had a good time on uh, this past Sunday. Now, but it doesn't stop there because this coming Sunday, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. this coming Sunday right here at the Scripture Cathedral, I want you here. Now, Last time I said the first hundred, I'm not going to say that this time, because um, uh, we have another room set up. So if you come, if you come uh, after this sanctuary is full, we have another room that you can access uh, that will have audio and video, and you can join right in uh, with the service. And see, the difference is, see, like some of you all, uh, you, you, like you join in on uh, uh, Facebook Live, or YouTube, and uh, uh, let me say it this way, um, it's okay, <laughs> but it's better to be in the building. Yeah. See, when we begin to praise God on Sunday, there's a certain sound, mm -hmm. and I just believe even if you're in the fellowship hall, that sound will trickle over to the fellowship hall. Yeah. You will hear that sound. So this Sunday, right here at the Scripture Cathedral at 11 a.m., 11 a.m., Right here at the Scripture Cathedral, we're located at 7610 Central Avenue in Landover, Maryland. Um, if you need directions or information, you can call the office. You can simply dial 202-483-9400. Let me say that again, 202-483-9400. Uh, if you get an answering device, just go into extension 202. Someone will get back with you. Also, this Sunday, we will have drive-through prayer also, but we're going to cut it back an hour so people uh, that are out there, the deacons and ministers, will have an opportunity to join into the service. So it will be from 10 a.m. until 12 noon. That's 10 a.m. until 12 noon on this coming Sunday. So if you know of anyone that uh, perhaps they cannot stay at the service but they need prayer, they can drive by right here at the Scripture Cathedral. Once again, we're located at 7610 Central Avenue and Landover, Maryland. And uh, let me thank all of the saints of God that showed up on Sunday. Yes. Give yourselves a hand. 
And now let me get to the spiritual aspect. God came through the place on Sunday. He, uh, he came through the place. Everybody, everybody praised God, even with the mask on, they praised God. The young people came down front and praised God. Families came down front and praised God. I looked to my right back there, I seen uh, some visitors in the aisle dancing. And, 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 and my subject on Sunday, who remembers what my subject was? Let me see if you was listening to me. If you was listening to me. <laughs> you don't remember what it was? Everything is going to be all right. <laughs> That's what it was. That's what it was. Everything is going to be all right. And see, y'all shouted so much you can't remember the sermon. What did pastor preach? I don't know, but we sure didn't have a time. <laughs> but everything is going to be all right. And... Uh, let me say this, if, if, if you need prayer, again, you can call right now, 202-483-9400, that's 202-483-9400. Again, if you get an answering device, just uh, go to extension 202 and leave your request right there. You can also request a bottle of our special anointing oil. Um, and also, I don't know how many books we have left, but there's a book that was written by my dad, Bishop C.L. Long, that uh, the title is How to Get Rid of Stress Before Stress Gets Rid of You. Now, I don't know about y'all, but these are some stressful times. And some people need to read this book so they can handle uh, what's being thrown at them right now. So dial now, 202-483-9400. Now, what I've been doing for the last couple of weeks, I haven't... Uh, let my panel know what we was going to talk about. So, so I say, let's have an open discussion. See, uh, you got to. I got to know where you, where your minds are. So tonight we're going to have a, uh, a a discussion, and uh, I want those. Oh, let me let me stop right here. Next week, we'll be right here for our panel discussion. But I'm going to give. 20 people an opportunity to be a live audience. Uh, okay. <laughs> 20 people. Now, what you got to do is you have to call the office and get on the list. Because after the 20, we're going to stop. So call the office on tomorrow. Wow. Ask for Minister Townsend. <laughs> Let him put your name on the list. 20 people. Live audience. And we're going to allow you to participate. If you have questions, you can ask this panel your question. Um, so that will be next Thursday. What is the date of next Thursday? That will be the 2nd of July. 2nd of July. So it won't interfere with your 4th of July. <laughs> you can't go anywhere anywhere. There's, I mean, not unless you got some illegal fireworks. <laughs> um, so next, next Thursday, July 2nd. Now listen, you got to listen. It starts at 6 p.m. 6 p.m. 6 p.m., remember that. So you have to be here no later than, let me see, 5.30, 5.30. 5.30 so you can get into the building. Um, that's next Thursday. Make sure. And don't try to do no, no backdoor stuff. Like, oh, you know, sometimes you know somebody, so you try to get in. No, 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 no. 20 people. You got to call in. I don't care who you are, call in. And put your name on the list. So let's go on. I wish you was here tonight because this is going to be interesting. So I got a question for the panel, and I want you all to answer the question. And I mean, chime in, whatever you have to do. I want you to do this. My question to you is, do you think the pandemic will change the way church was? Do you think the pandemic will change the way church was? And if so, how? Look at them thinking, y'all. See, I was brought up. My daddy told me, son, you got to be a quick thinker. <laughs> Sometimes you don't have time to sit there. And, but do you think it's going to change? I, I, I think that the proud, say for instance, um, the way is, is, is going out right now, say for instance, to me, I feel like we're still not back to normal yet. And the longer we don't get back to normal, or either it's going to be, or either the system itself is creating a new norm. Mm. And the problem with that is people's thinking 
when you start doing that, they start thinking a different way. So in other words, you think about it like this. Um, people that once will come to church, either they're not gonna come, or they're gonna be slow for in coming, or either they're gonna either, uh, or did the pandemic give them that push, to, that drive to say, I got to get to church, even so more than before the pandemic even happened. Yeah. So right, so, so right now, to be honest with you, I'm kind of not, I don't want to use the word scared, but I'm kind of in limbo because, um, you know, there's no way you cannot be affected by what's going on right now. It's, hmm. it's, 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 and, and to me, um, to me, this is the way I feel about the whole thing. Right now, this pandemic is either going to make you more spiritual or you're going to become more calm. Mm -hmm. One way or another, you're going, you're going in that direction because, you know, if your mind ain't right and God does not stabilize your, our mind and keep us, even during this time right now, you know, I don't know about some of y'all, but I definitely missed the Thursday night prayer service on Sunday morning. Now, right there, right there. Uh, let me make the question more personal. How has it affected you? I mean, to be honest with you, I feel I feel the stress of not of of not being there, of not having it. I mean, to me, I mean, I really miss that service and that that morning service. Oh, one mean. second, Elder Johnson. Before we move on, if I can get the sound engineer to turn our floor monitors down, I believe we can get rid of that ring, the floor monitors. Yes, sir. All right. So you said it affects you um, because you missed the service. Missed the service and missed that, that time of fellowship. And, 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 and it, you know, you have to, it makes you rethink. It, it, I mean, I mean, I really, um, my attitude is I got to get closer to God during this time. There's no ifs about it. So say for instance, Truthfully, as a as a as an elder, I feel the pull of Satan. I feel it. I'm just being truthful to you. I, I, I feel like spiritually, it's almost like um, if I'm talking to God, he's he's in my ear. Mm -hmm. and, 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 and like even you grow more, you grow even more. You're gonna become even more spiritual, or you're gonna become more calm. And so I have to rethink spiritually. Mm -hmm. I definitely have to rethink spiritually because how do you, how do you, how do you, how do you, um, so think about it like this. Right now, say for instance, if they weren't on looking at us right now, so you think, what are they doing? Mm -hmm. You know, on Sunday morning, if you were in church at 8.30, then what are you doing? And if you're in Bible class on a Tuesday night, then what are you doing? And if you're in prayer service on a Thursday night, then what are you doing? Mm -hmm. Something is going to take the place of that. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's, that's all I'm saying. So you really got to rethink spiritually to stay up on top of this. If not, if not, if, if not we're going to get caught. Okay. So you expressed what you thought. Let's go down the line. Minister Sard. Um, from a personal stand, from a personal standpoint, it's sense of urgency. Mm -hmm. I, I want to say because you because now that the 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 opportunities that perhaps we took for granted were taken away from us at one point. Like mm -hmm. when and to answer your question in terms of how has it affect ministry and how we would do ministry going forward, um, I think it has in the sense of like really making you aware of how little time you actually have to do what you mm -hmm. got to do, you know? So it, it made me reevaluate like how, how can I be more effective or do more with less time, mm. you know, or just get the best out of every single effort because you may not necessarily get that many swings at bat, so to speak. That's right. So every encounter every conversation how do you make it count now i'm i'm, I'm going to address something that you said 
because somebody once said that an idle mind is the devil's workshop. So now you have all this idle time, not you specifically, but what our viewers, what are you doing with your time? Elder Johnson said something that makes a lot of sense. If I'm used to coming to church on 8.30, uh, 11 o'clock, Thursday nights, now I don't do that, what am I doing? Am I diving more into my word? Am I praying? And sometimes, some, some, sometimes, sometimes um, um, I find myself doing more reading, more studying, but there's still a lot of idle time. Mm -hmm. So it can affect you. Um, that, so, see, I'm, I'm talking like this, I don't want to get into the meat of mine until I see what you guys think. Uh, come on, uh, Minister Sean. Um, I think that the, the, the pandemic has already affected us, um, and it's evident visually. Um, when, when we come together, um, we're doing these things that are unprecedented in a church body where we cannot uh, physically interact. And um, that seems kind, kind of strange and it actually seems weird that we're not able to shake hands or we're not able to, you know, hug one another or um, you, you have to even be careful how you greet somebody. And uh, God forbid you, you call for a sneeze, um, you know, another saint may look at you like, you know, do you got that COVID? And <laughs> it's, it's really, it, it, it is, Elder Johnson, to a certain degree, it is scary that we have to deal with that type of issue. Um, and, but on the flip side, being spiritual, the, the spiritual mind will override that and say, well, if I'm covered under the blood, why should I, why, why should I have to do these things? But you can't be selfish. Mm -hmm. Because let's say that you are a person that has it, but you've you you're 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 a carrier or whatever, and you're you know you're living with it. But somebody else' immune system may not be able to handle it, so you have to be considerate. So it is a very very strange space and place to be in. And as far as it, you know, affecting me personally, like you said, when when you're used to church, when you're used to coming to church, you know this is. This is like spiritual exercise, and it, it has such an impact on your mentality uh, when you're able to come together. And uh, to, to Minister Williams' point, when that's taken away, you, you, you don't realize it until it's gone how important it was in your life. And I love more now coming to church because it's so limited. And I appreciate it more now because the opportunities are so few and far between. So we do have to take advantage of the times that we have together and, and be intentional in what it is that we do in service and what it is that we do for Christ. Um, so uh, I find myself having my spiritual ear open to God about everything. Like, should I go this way home? You know, tell me which way to go because there's so much stuff going on in the world now. I have to communicate with him just to feel safe hmm. because this is a this is not a safe place to be in right now. The, Timothy declares we're living in perilous times. Anything can happen when you're living in perilous times, and it doesn't matter whether you're saying a sinner because it rains on the just as well as the un, as well as the unjust. I believe that God will protect us, but. You know, you can drive home and, be, and get into a car accident or somebody can randomly be shooting and a bullet come through your your door. So uh, I'm, I'm constantly talking to God about those things and about church and, you know, protecting the, the people of God and, of course, my own family. Um, so this time has, I think for most of us, pushed us to a place where we have to stay in God's face because we have no alternative. First Lady. Um, the pandemic has made a difference with the church. Um, when you think about the times where in, this is where you got your peace and your joy, and this is where you got your word. Um, when you didn't pick up the word, 
you came here to hear the word. So um, not being in the house of God like you used to and to hear the word of God has really done a lot in the lives of people. Um, when I think about this is my livelihood, I retired, and so church is me. And so um, you just look for that gathering of the saints of God. Even if you're not shouting, just to see somebody else shouting, giving you the joy. Um, just to greet each other was enough. And so now that you don't have that and seem like the world is automatically just stopped. It was March the 15th, stopped. And so no choir rehearsal. So Saturdays is like, I'm just home. And it's like you're in the house constantly. Or even you go to the store and then you come back home. And so what I had to find myself doing is take the time and just start reading the word of God. And then you find yourself in a secret place where you can cry out to God, God, this is what I'm feeling, being honest about what I'm feeling. And then you don't, at that point, you really don't have no one that you can share how you really feel with. Because a lot of times when people, some people can get over spiritual. Uh, like if I have a call for I'm not feeling good, God gonna take care of me. But at the same token, you still need to go to the doctor because something could be wrong. You're not exempt from it. So the thing about it is, is you have to really say, God, show me me. And at the same token, hold on to me because I want to make it through. And so when you want to commit yourself to God at that moment, you just say uh, the fasting sometimes is not like it used to because you're at home all the time, right around your food. So <laughs> it's like the fasting is gone. Uh, the prayer is if you have children, you hear more of the kids than you are to spend time alone with God. And so all these things that you used to do to stay hold to God, it's almost like taken away from you. And so the timing, just to uh, find out when God is gonna come. Because if you did it March 15th, if that happened like that, when is he gonna come? And so how long are we gonna be in this before he come? And so where would I stand in him? or where would I fall short in him because of the simple fact I don't have the time that I used to have to appreciate what God had already given us. And so now that it lets you know that some people was coming to the building just to be coming to be busy. Now you don't have to come to the, to the building to be busy. Now how busy are you at home? And, and what are you getting caught up in? And what are you feeding yourself with? So if you're feeding yourself with a bunch of junk when you come back, there's a lot of junk that's going to have to be changed if you change. And like some people might not never come back into the house of God. Why? Out of fear? Out of fear of saying, oh, they said that I can catch it here and I can catch it here and I can catch it here. Well, if they open up everything else and they open up the church, I'd rather catch it in church than to catch it in the, on the dance hall floor or, 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 or catch it on the beach. Uh, but let me catch it in the house of God. So, but I know that God will cover, and whatever God has planned to do, he's going to do it. It doesn't matter. He's going to do whatever he's going to do. So I understand the fact of just holding on and saving yourself. That's what the word said. Save yourself from this untoward generation. And so I might can't save you, but I have to save myself. But I can also share the God that I have on the inside with somebody who don't know how to trust or believe in him through this situation. Minister Mike. Yes, sir. It, um, it feels like an awkward time um, because, you know, we're accustomed to coming to church like, you know, others have referenced. And um, when you get out of a, I'm going to call it a routine, but when you get out of a certain way of living, you know, and having a, expectations and having outlets like the church has always been a great outlet for a lot of people and I you know I look at it you know people when they get stressed out and you talked about the book you know how to handle stress and everything this has been very good as far as the mental health of people you know it's um you know and when you don't have that as regularly and you also have a lot of idle time and opportunity and then you also have the battle that's going on in your mind, you know, because, you know, every day with the, with the idle time, there's always going to be thoughts. There's always going to be opposition. And, 
you know, now it's like trying to figure out, okay, during this time, he said, you can read, but you can't do but so much reading, and you can do but so much praying, you can do but so much, you know, because we're still living in this world. Um, but it seems like, you know, I think coming back to church and just being able to get back in fellowship, um, I think that's going to help offset some of that. You know, I believe, and I'm, it was just great when we saw we had the parking lot worship and praise. Mm -hmm. That was just amazing. Just, man, I had tears in my eyes just sitting there seeing the people of God praising God and just worshiping God. And, um, you know, I believe that that day will come again. We will all be in here again together. You know, it's coming. And so the anticipation of that and just understanding that we have to be more alert during this time because, and that's why I find myself, I mean, we have to be alert for multiple reasons. One, because we got to make sure we take care of the people, but then also we have to be alert for our soul. So, this. Okay. So, will the pandemic change church as we knew it before March 15th? I'm going to say yes. Um, first of all, you got to understand that this can affect your faith. Some people's faith is being tested right now. Um, even pastors, their faith are being tested. Um, leaders, their faith are being tested. So that's why I said several times, no church as usual. There's going to be a difference. We cannot come back to the same way church was. Um, there has to be a difference. There has to be um, there has to be, we have to do more to allow God to come in. We had a lot of, uh, a lot of um, things that were hindering before the pandemic. And I believe God has given us a chance to straighten some stuff out. I had a meeting with my leaders um, last Saturday, or my leaders and some people that were um, going to help, you know, make sure everything goes well. And you, I told them, the only way we're going to win now, we have to be unified. We have to be on one accord. That's the only way that is going to happen. And this is making us realize that. Not just Scripture Cathedral, but all churches have to be on one accord. Um, think about some things. You know what it seems like to me? It seems like I've taken a flight to California. Jet lag. And I can't get myself together. You know, that's what it feels like. And I think about some things. We've only had one communion this year. One. One communion. Because of uh, the pandemic. One communion. We have communion every fourth uh, Sunday. We've had one. Um, I think about some things. No choir rehearsal. No auxiliary meetings. And. Um, no 8.30 service, no Bible study, no Thursday night. And it was no Sunday school. It was to a point, no, it was no Sunday morning, nothing. We would come, um, but nothing. So what are the people that's, that used to say, and I've heard it, well, how do you think they feel now? We go to church too much. Did we appease them? Hmm. Now, that's something to think about. Yeah. Yeah. I don't think so. Um, sometimes when something is taken away from you, the little, it could be the least little thing. It'll make you stop and say, I wish that it never have happened. Mm. Or I should have shut my mouth when I used to complain a lot. That's right. And so when God gives you certain things or certain, your life is going a certain way, you might not understand why. But when God shows you why, by taking something away from you, then you'll be like, oh, I appreciate it. It just made me appreciate the man of God more, the people of God more. Because you just think if some, something is taken away from you that you kind of like, it helped you throughout your day. Mm -hmm. It's almost like somebody who can get on your nerve the most, and if they're not around, you upset because they're not there to get on your nerve. <laughs> <laughs> so it's, I mean, sometimes, 
you might complain why you're in a situation, but you got to understand there's a reason for everything. And so you got to learn how to appreciate what you got because sometimes you never know when it's taken away from you. See, 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 I've said this, and some people get upset when I say this, but I think that this is helping the Bible be fulfilled because, in my opinion, the Bible says something about a falling away in my opinion. And some people will not come back. They won't make it back. Because especially if you weren't uh, anchored. If you weren't anchored. See, I'm anchored so the winds can blow. They can do whatever they want. I'm anchored. Some people are anchored in ministry. Anchored in the Lord. Some people were um, they were allowing the pastor's anchor to keep them. Mm, you, you, you understand where I'm going? Uh, they were allowing ministerial board to keep them anchored. Now there's nothing. And I remember I, 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 I read a story about a young lady and, a, and her, her child were on a boat. And it was daytime. And they fell to sleep. When they woke up, because the boat wasn't anchored, it was nighttime, and they didn't know where they were. They were far away from the shore. This has pushed some people from the shore. So, it is, uh -huh. in answer to that, the, and I'm, and it's good that we're having this conversation because the scary thing about that is, while they were asleep, you didn't know how far you had drifted, and um, and I and I guess through this conversation, I'm. Even when I'm doing self-reflection, um, it, it won't be until we either come together or there's a particular task that you know you have to do mm -hmm. to know exactly what state you're in. Mm -hmm. Even like if you call or we'll check in on brothers and everything and say, how you doing? I'm fine, right? right. Well, what is fine? You, you don't know, you know what I mean? Because exactly. you may be drifting See. and you, don't, you can't tell. One of the things that I learned when I was going to school is some people, you have to have them in front of you to get a feel for them. Mm -hmm. So if I call you and you say, I'm fine, I can't, you know, it's like when, you, when you, your child come in front of you because they done something at school and you can look at them when you say, did you do that? You can tell whether they're lying or not. Body language. Body language. Right. So when you look, you're, you're absolutely right. I call, hey, Elder Johnson, how you doing? I'm fine. But you might be struggling. Some people don't have enough, uh, what you call it, they're too proud, perhaps, to say, look, man, I'm struggling. You understand what I'm saying? So when you, when you take, when you take, uh, us away from what we do, it's a problem. And see, the shut, see, in some cases, the coronavirus shutdowns have weakened church connections. Yeah. I'm sure you what I mean. The fact of the matter is that we draw strength from one another. Sure. So you've taken us away. So Hebrews 10 and 25, New Living Test uh, translation says, and let us not neglect our meeting together, mm -hmm. right? As some people do. But encourage one another, especially now that the day of his return is drawing near. That's Bible. Yes. That's straight up Bible. Yes. So if there is no connection, when you are by yourself and things get hard and the devil begins to use trials and tricks, and tribulations against you. And there is nowhere for you to plug into what's going to happen. Yeah. If you, go ahead, go ahead. You know, the problem with, the, the, the problem with that is, is we are constantly in battle. I mean, constantly. So the only way to combat the devil, I, I mean, God help if you don't got the Holy Ghost. That's a problem. 
you cannot defend yourself. You're going to need the Holy Ghost to do that. But the Bible says he will bring all things to your remembrance, whatsoever things that I have taught you. Say, for instance, like I, was, like I said when I was talking a few minutes ago, those times when the enemy attacked, the only thing that I could come back with is what the Bible has said. I had to remind the devil and remind myself I'm a child of God. No, I live by kingdom principles. This carnal man will not defeat me, no. And one thing for sure, and the first lady brought up a very, very, a very, very important point. Look, strategically, strategically, whether we see it or not, spiritually, these demons are positioning themselves. And, you know, Jesus could come back at any time. That's what I have to keep reminding myself. So, be, you know, you know, um, the Bible says, the same day that Noah went in the, in the ark, they was giving in marriage, eating and drinking, like life was no problem. And, and it's the same scenario right now. Um, we're eating, drinking, giving in marriage, and any time Jesus could come back. So I'm telling you, you're going to need the Holy Ghost to make it through this one. You got to have that personal walk with Christ. You got to have it. If it's not there, somewhere you better find it. Just like the virgins, five were wise, five and foolish. You cannot, you cannot take it for granted. And it's a dangerous thing to be to be sleep at a time like this. Now, the other day I was walking through the house and I said, Lord, I can't I cannot I didn't want to walk into anything and, and, and it hurt myself. But there was a little light, a little light. It didn't have to be a big light. It just had to be a little light. And that little light, I went toward that light so I could know where I was going because I could not find the light switch, even though I know where they were at. But you're going to need a little light. It don't have to be a big light. But you better <laughs> find something that you can hold on to, and God knows you're going to need the Holy Ghost to make it through this. And, and that's what, and to, to that Hebrews 10, we get encouragement as we see the day approaching from one another. And we joke about this sometimes, but it's like, even when you're not having the best walk, I come to church and because I see you, mm -hmm. I know I still got time. Like the rapture ain't take place yet. You know what I'm saying? Like the day is approaching. So I'm encouraged because like you said, like, in, like as, it, as it was in the day of Noah, the world would go about its business as mm -hmm. if nothing is happening. But you are my marker to make sure that the rapture has not taken place. The world will go on thinking everything is fine until perhaps a news report comes, but our, our encouragement and our marker, I get encouraged seeing my brother or seeing my sister because I know that if they're still here, I still have time, you know? And that's encouraging. And, and the interesting thing about that is when once you slip out of time, there is no help. Yeah. When you're in eternity, that's set for eternity. That There is no coming back for that. And um, to, to your point, Pastor, the Bible says in Romans 15 and 1 that we ought to, the strong ought to bear the infirmities of the weak. Sure. So when we come together, and I don't just want to call it energy. But there is a certain energy. There's a certain spiritual energy that we draw one from another. So if I'm weak and I come in the building, I can gain strength from somebody. And those that are strong should be happy that they are strong because now you can help that brother or sister that doesn't have enough strength to maybe make it to the next day. And we'll say, well, uh, you know, pastors will, will say and, and preachers will say, um, by this time tomorrow, yeah, but it's happening right now because you're in the service. The by this time tomorrow, that's, that's still in your future. But it starts right here because we're together and we're praising and worshiping God. And now you can, even if you're down, though your spirit can be lifted and just give you a little bit of more, a little bit more something to make it to the next day. See, when I, when I look at the virus, it makes me wonder if some people have lost their faith and trust in God. It really makes me wonder. Um, see, I'm going to go back to what you said earlier, Elder Johnson, when you said 
you know, you have to go on what you, what you've read and what you know, what you've been taught. So, what if somebody is not a a, a person that picks up their Bible, but the only thing was keeping them was was made was coming together, and and the words that come out of the pastor's mouth could keep them going. Now they don't have that. It's, well, I think it's. The, the perfect example was his example relating to the five, the, the ten virgins, five were wise and five were foolish. They, five had oil and five didn't. So if, if you're the kind of person who is just leaning on other people, then when the oil that you have from them, from them runs out, you're left with nothing. And, and the Bible says that the, the, the keeper of the house said, no, the, the, the virgin said, go out into the street and buy from those who sell. But we know that that was pre-rapture. Mm -hmm. And the moment that the, the bridegroom came, because there was a, a, a clarion call in the city and the door was shut, it was too late. So like you said, Minnesota, now that we can see one another, now we got time to still get it right. You got time to get that oil in your vessel and keep your lamp trimmed and burning if you, if you wait then you can miss it, but it's nobody's fault for your own. Yeah. Nobody's fault but your own because you, you've been given an extension. Yeah, and that, and, and, the, and that oil, you can't buy that oil, can't but it's it. not free. So I would even challenge the individual, if you've only been living off of a Sunday morning, mm -hmm. you pay the price and crack that book open. Like, you got to put time in to understand who he is because – to, to Minister Sean's point, in that parable, you're not going to last. I don't care how long you stick around. You won't last till the time approach. Let me move on. Let's, let's talk about this. What about online services? What, what do you think? What do you think? Because I, I saw somebody comment. That's why we have DVDs and CDs and and. Uh, read material. Mm -hmm. See, you gotta understand. This, I'm, I'm gonna tell you. Some stuff I told y'all last week. I wanna be there. I wanna. I got to. I can't. I can't cheer for the Cowboys like I want to. But if I was there, I mean, I'm watching on TV. But if I was there, if I was at the Super Bowl, there's a difference. That's the other problem. With Say, for instance, if I'm sick at home, that's great. Online services is great. But there's certain ways you need to approach God. That's right. You don't approach God. You have to wash your face, brush your teeth, <laughs> clean your tail, and you at home talking about hallelujah. And the Lord said, Lord, go take a shower. That's what people do. When they're at home not doing nothing, they don't clean, they don't listen. How are you going to approach God like that? How you know? Don't you know you're in worship? Mm. It, I mean, would you come to church any kind of way? God is always with us, and you just at home. You have and, and then say, what kind of sense of God do you have? I mean, to be honest with you, I mean, really, hair nappy, face nappy, you smelling like I don't know what, and you're gonna approach God? Well, I don't want to. If you come in here and say hallelujah and your breath stink, I want to smell it. <laughs> I mean, I'm being truthful with you. We treating God like worship is something that you don't have to prepare for. You don't approach God any kind of way. Now, if you're on the flat of your back, that's a different story, a totally different story. But when there is nothing wrong with you, when there is nothing wrong with you, even, look, when, when, Aaron's son approached God the wrong way with some bad, with some strange fire. He smote them, killed both of them, Nadab and Abihu was gone just because they approached God the wrong way. And here you are having washed your face, having brushed your teeth, having done anything. I mean, for real. I mean, you think, you think we could just do God any kind of way? I don't mean no harm, but online services has its place. I, I hate to say it, it's the truth. 
it has its place. It has its place. And to misuse it is a shame before God. It's a shame before God. It is a total shame before God. I hate to say that's just how I feel about it. Listen, a survey found that one third or more of those who had previously attended church regularly before the pandemic not, uh, are now not even bothering to watch online services. Mm -hmm. Pastor, <laughs> I think Elder Johnson has got me got me to the point of repentance because when I was on vacation, all of the things that he said, I fell into that category. Now, I was on vacation, but you roll over and you look at the online service instead of doing what you normally right. do to prepare for church. Um, now, I think on, online services and CDs and DVDs, they're wonderful tools in their right place. Um, DVDs, CDs, YouTube, going back and looking at Facebook, that's great for revision. But to actually uh, have it in its original um, state is, is something that you have to be in the room in order to experience. Um, you can't get that, and I, for lack of a better term, you can't get that feel just by watching a, a CD or a DVD or even looking at us live now. You can't feel what we feel. Like what I feel right now, I feel like getting up and running around the building because of what it is that we're talking about. It's that important, and it, you know, it, it does something to the person that um, you you, you want to make the rapture. You want to live for God. So I feel everything that's being saying being said tonight, but we don't know if that's translatable. Exactly, and and I think that's the demarcation between individuals who are there for experience or entertainment. Because if I just need to be entertained then I want it on my own terms. This is, the how, this is how I prefer to receive it. And you can keep the rest of the stuff, right? And that's very irreverent, to be quite frank. That's very irreverent. And to, to, to Elder Johnson's point, it has its place. Me, personally, I feel like teachings translate well, you know, virtually. But, like, preaching is timely. Like, it, it, it has to happen then there at that moment and if you're not there it does it's a word that doesn't apply to you so it may not hit you the same way because you're not there like when we always reference Pentecost he's like look this promise is for all of you but you gotta you gotta wait mm -hmm. and be there in one place so everybody that he gave that command to did not actually experience the promise of Pentecost because everybody wasn't there so sometimes you might feel like, oh, it's not something worthy to be watched. I'm pretty sure you may feel that way because you're listening to a word that you don't qualify for. Think about this. When I'm at home looking at TV, I have an opportunity to turn the TV. Yeah. So if you're at home, you, you can say, you know, I don't want to hear that today. Uh, yeah. you, you understand where I'm yeah. going? Um, you know, I'm, I'm sitting here thinking, most of the time, when Jesus uh, or, the man, or a man of God, uh, somebody was healed or whatever, Jesus either went to their house or they came to him. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. No, no yeah. <laughs> See, but go ahead first, Lane. Are they going to get healing from that CD? They Is could. that CD going to lay hands on them? No, it's not. And majority of the time, they will not get convicted either. Right. You will right. not feel a conviction from a person from off a CD. But when somebody is there and they're, and they're speaking the word to you to convict you through the word that you may make a change, then there's a difference. And majority of the time, if you listen to a CD, either you're asleep, half of, half of the time you've gone to sleep through the CD, or it's just something that you're used to like any other show that comes on it on TV. You get comfortable with it. Well, let's look at it this way. You have people that sit in the congregation and go to sleep. That's right. So what are you going to do if you're at home in your own bed or your own house? Well, I think Lady D and Mr. Sonny had two valid points. When, if you're in the room, um, it gives you the ability, to, it, because, it's, because it's an organic feeling. Um, when, if, if I'm at home, I don't get the same um, in aha moments or enlightenment. 
Um, even if I'm in the room and I miss some stuff, because I'm in the room, I get to feel it. But if I'm at home now, I can analyze everything. And to your point, it's, it's more about dissection. You're, you're breaking down. You, you're, you're listening, at, but you're, you're breaking it down. And like, you're like going through looking at game film for uh, the next week. And, and church service shouldn't be like that. If I'm in the room and I go back, I'm just picking up what I missed. But at least I was in the room. But if I'm not in the room, now it, be, it can become a form of entertainment. Oh, man, did you hear that pastor hoop? Did you hear the preacher do this? Did you hear the, the songs that say, or whatever it is? So it changes its from the original organic state that is in into something completely different. And I think that's, that's missed when you're not in the building. And this applies to able-bodied individuals. I yes. don't want this to oh, be yeah. misinterpreted exactly. because miracles have happened over CDs yeah. and over the airways. Yeah. And to Elder Johnson's point, like, if you're sick on the flat of your back, that was the one time when Jesus had virtual service. He sent the word and said, by this time, right. he's going to be healed. He was on the flat of his back. He couldn't move. Mm -hmm. And what we're talking about is the posture of worship, the way you approach God. Mm -hmm. And if it's irreverent, the Bible says that the scriptures are shut up to those who are in sin. So if you're in rebellion or you're in your I do what I want to do mode, God locks the truth of the word up to you. Like you won't get it even if you listen to it three, three four times because you're coming at it with the wrong spirit. And I think to that point, everything that we've been saying is like if you're able to make it to the throne, Get to the throne. Do what you can do and let God do the rest. But don't say, God, I live here. Drop it off on your way to the temple. It don't work like that. You know? See, this is what I think. The scary thought is for those whose church affiliation was already tenuous, the disconnect may be permanent. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. For those who didn't attend regularly, it really hasn't changed anything because now they feel less guilty about not going. <laughs> Pastor, I'm thinking the whole time when you're talking is accountability. Mm -hmm. Like the church provides accountability for it people. Does. Um, you know, we want a Netflix experience at home watching the videos and watching the online services and everything. Like you said, we can just change the channel or flip to a different media or whatever. But, you know, until we understand the importance of being accountable and being in our place so that we can be accountable, it's, you know, we'll just continue to wonder why we're not being blessed and wonder why we got to keep looking for a word from any Tom, Dick, and Harry that's out there preaching. See, in my opinion, I thought at first the pandemic might encourage people to do more online worship and give more uh, personal time to God, but it really hasn't. Pastor, you mentioned it on, on Sunday in your message that God has allowed the wheat and the tear to grow together, mm -hmm. and now he's doing the separating. Um, so those that look like us, that look like the church, um, now you're beginning to see what they really are and who they really are and who we really are. Um, and uh, it's, I'm not saying that anybody is better than anybody else, but the, the, the work that you put in, the, the faithfulness that you've been, not only to your church, the building, but the church triumphant in Jesus Christ, those true values, those true colors are being shown now. This is the time when we're supposed to lock arms and come together and band together and, and beat the devil because he's not stopping. And the only way that we can make it, Hezekiah Walker has a song, I need you and you need me. We are all a part of God's body. Mm -hmm. And we can't make it on our own because no man is an island. We got to do it together. As a pastor, and I believe other pastors may feel the same way, much of my attention has turned to dealing with uh, the coronavirus pandemic. I'm grateful for the responses and for the caring hearts of so many here at Scripture Cathedral. In the midst of a major challenge, it is heartwarming and reassuring to see many people who really care.
but the coronavirus will move past its pandemic state at some point in the future. And I'm interested to see what our churches will look like on the other side. That's what I'm interested in seeing. What they're going to look like on the other side. Um, some of the things, some of the things, let, 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 me, let me just say this. Some of the things, as a pastor, a leader, this is some of the things you got to, you got to think about. Non-digital giving will become an afterthought. Fewer people will want to handle the offering plates, baskets. Fewer people will want to touch cash. Um, so we got to expect for a dramatic decrease in non-digital giving. See, this is the kind of things you have to think about. And, and that's, why, that's why we have to, to help the people that don't know how to give digitally, digi digitally. We have to help them understand that. Um, that's what we're coming to. Got to help them understand that. S listen, smaller worship services will become normal. We're already seeing that trend. Even before the pandemic, churches, they were losing members. The numbers were going down. It's proven. So now, we're in a big fight. But again, I tell you this, God is going to pour out his spirit upon all flesh. Now the churches will be full again. People are going to come. They're going to do that. Uh, we anticipate many of the larger churches will attempt to have services capped around 250, 300, the larger churches. Um, so, a 200 attendance church, for example, may move, I mean, yeah, may move toward two services post-coronavirus. I'm talking about on the other side. Um, the 80 percent rule will become the 60 percent rule. Um, so the rule for, for, for church uh, worship services, the 80 percent rule said that a uh, worship center with or a church with a capacity of 200 feels full at 160 people. The 60 percent rule says the congregation will want more social distancing and thus the 200 capacity worship center will reach its social distancing capacity at 120. These are just some of the things you have to think about as a pastor. I have to look it up and see what's going on. The negative economy impact on churches could have long-lasting effects. Church leaders should begin, that's why I got to get with my leaders, to discuss what if. <laughs> what if? What if giving is cut by 30% or more? And I don't know, many churches, I don't know, I'm, I'm not ashamed to say it, I've seen, I've seen a, a drop in, in, in giving. So what if? Got to prepare for that. We got to make adjustments. Uh, social distancing will change permanently some of the traditions in many churches. Uh, stand and greet is gone. Uh, we will not return to, and it will not return to most churches. Church huggers will no longer be tolerated. Even handshakes will be minimized. The laying of hands will be minimized. Communion. Somebody asked me, three or four people, when are you going to have communion? I have to think of ways because the way we do communion, we have the, 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 the body and the blood, which is the, the bread and the wine, sitting there, people come and pick it up. I have to change that. So I'm thinking, I'm thinking, I'm thinking, you know. So you always got to think. This is what's going to happen. And I think Scripture Cathedral is going to be one of the uh, adoptee, adoptors. This is what I mean. Church ab uh, adoption will increase significantly. Church adoption takes place when a healthier church brings the people and assets of a struggling church into its church family. 
God is getting his people together one way or the other. The adopted church becomes a campus of the adopting church. Some churches have already closed their doors. Some are on the verge of closing. Those people got to go somewhere. Why not Scripture Cathedral? <laughs> Finally, churches will rapidly adopt more virtual practices. Virtual worship services, virtual choir rehearsals, uh, auxiliary meetings virtually, etc. And they will become the norm. That's the kind of things pastors have to think about. Um, they're saying now that there's a spike going on. The next thing they're going to try to say is we need to shut back down again. Then that's going to put more pressure on the church. Of course, these are trying days. I know it. You know it. But one thing you got to remember. God's got this situation. He's got you, he's got me, and he's got the church. In other words, God is still in control. Sean, you ready to say something? Yeah, Pastor, only that based on the, the, the last few sentences that you spoke, we are absolutely feeling the, the pressure and the crunch of the Antichrist being in, in the earth. And it is, it is true. Jesus is coming. And that's not a slogan. It's not a, a thing to say as a cliche. It's, it's a reality that's going to catch a lot of people. Jesus is coming. And he's only going to appear to those that are, who are looking for him. So what's really frightening is that all of the stuff that we have to deal with now we are not in control. God is in control, but we are not in control of Facebook. We are not in control of Zoom. We are not in control of YouTube. At any moment, those entities could say, you got to pay or you're done. Or no religious services. Exactly. So then where does that leave the body of Christ as it relates to being able to communicate what the, the, the word of God and the gospel? So... And, and I, w I was reading somewhere, th there are a group of people of color who are looking to establish their own social network so that they're in control because every, right now we're simply not. So I think that um, as we continue to move forward and press forward that um, we, have to, we have to absolutely figure something out. There has to be another way of communicating. Maybe we gotta go back to the, the CB radio or something, I don't know. <laughs> Shortwave, because it's, it, the, 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 the ability to communicate, the, the, tight, the, the reins are gonna be tightened even more because the, 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 the cities and the states that we live in, they don't want God. No. They, they don't want God in anything. And it is gonna be up to us to figure out a way to keep God relevant not only in America, but in the world. You know, and I think what we're experiencing now through the church is the system of divide and conquer. To divide us, they will conquer us if we allow them to divide us. Um, but, there is, is, but there is still hope, and that hope is still going to be in the word of God. Upon this rock, I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. And, and the great thing about that I'm always constantly reminding myself is that God is not limited in power. He's not limited in time. He's not held captive by any situation. He is not a limitless God in power. If we believe in him, trust in his word, one way or another, if you are his child, he's going to bring you through it. There's no if, answer, but, buts about it because his word he will not lie it's impossible for him to lie he said he that begun a good work in you he is well able to finish it to the day of Christ now but there's a lot in the word I mean there's you know we're not going to make this without trial or tribulation if we be without trial or tribulation we are no good to him 
you know, that stability is only going to come through trial and tribulation. But we have got to be steadfast. We've got to be unmovable. We have got to always be abounding in the word of the Lord. And if I had to say anything to anybody, you better listen to your pastor. Oh, my God. You're in trouble if you will not listen. You got to follow that cloud as Moses. You got to follow that fire. And as Paul said, if you're confused, he said, follow me as I follow Christ. And you can't go wrong. So I guess the bottom line is um, you got to build up your faith. You have to, your faith has to be so strong that even though it looks like things are over, you know that you know that you're still going to make it through. And the reason you're going to make it through is because you have God on your side. And, and people, um, I guess, you know, the question was how will the church, is it going to change? I believe it will, but I still believe God is going to do what he's going to do. You, you see, there's... There's some somebody used to say there's more than one way to skin a to skin a cat. God gonna make something happen. That's what He's gonna do, and He's going to He's going to fill His churches. People are going to be filled with the Holy Ghost. Um, um, one thing I will say is, going back to the five, uh, the ten virgins, five that were wise and five that were foolish. Um, don't call me. You better get your own oil. I'll pray for you, but you're not going to get none of my oil. You can't have none of that. Everybody got to have their own oil. I can't speak in tongues for you. You got to speak in tongues for yourself. Um, you, got to, you got to build up your faith for yourself. Now, I can help you build it up, but like Elder Johnson said, you got to listen. You got to listen to your pastor. God places men of God in your life to help you get around certain areas in your life to get you to a certain point. Um, there's some scripture in the Bible, I, I can't think of it, but it's about teaching. Some people are ever learning. That's right. And some people have not came to the knowledge of the truth, and all this is going on. And God is saying, what more do I need to let happen? What more do I need to let happen? Um, I don't know, it's going to come a time, you, we might have to have an a, a underground railroad just to get to church. It might happen. They like us. I think it was you said. Uh, Sean said that, um, or well, one of y'all that they they don't care about no God and no church. And it's all in it's all in the pledge of allegiance and God. No, it's on your money and God we trust. Really, different God. Different God. They need to use a little G. Big G. They which one they got? They got the little G. Oh, they do. Yeah. Okay, then that means that's not the God we serve. That's right. Right. I know you know what I never noticed that. Mm -hmm. God we trust. No. I will trust in the Lord mm -hmm. until I die. So the bottom line is I, I think I'm talking like this to get my people to understand whenever these doors open, you gotta get here. Unless unless you're on the flat of your back, unless you sick, something happens in emergency. But don't fall into no trap. That's what the devil's trying to do. Now everything is like this. So we're back to church, but a lot of people are not back to work. You gotta understand that. So they their 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 timing is off. You, you know what I'm saying? So that's why I'm I'm making it I'm making a, a concerted effort. So if church started at eleven o'clock, let's start at eleven o'clock. If you don't come and don't get plugged in, that's your fault. It ain't my fault. And that can happen. That can happen. Sunday, we started at 12. I was up by 11.30 preaching. Some people still walked in after 11.30, quarter to 12. You can miss so much in such a short time. You never know what's going to happen. So you got to be, you got to be on time. Uh, uh, you got to, you got to, you, you know, we're open now. The churches are open. So you, you got to come together. Now, right now, we're only coming on Sunday. So how, how can you, 
How can you not come just on Sundays? There's no excuse. Well, my kids got homework or they got to go to school. No, they don't. First of all, school is, is done. Before that, uh, they, had, they did it virtually, but you didn't have to get them up and get them ready. There's no excuse now. No excuse. Now, I will tell you this, and, and it's, it's, it's in the Bible, it's in the church. As soon as uh, some amusement parks open, you're going to get there on time. But you can't get to church on time. So, we got to balance. See, your, your balance, your balance is off. Your balance is off. Um, but it's, it's coming to a point where God is looking and saying, I got to see who's going to trust me. Who can I bless now? He, he's looking. Who can I give this? Who can I give that? And what people get upset for, I had a conversation the other day is, listen, if you work, you can obtain things. But there's a difference when God gives you something. When you obtain it on your own, if somebody pulls that rug from under you, say, for instance, you get a call tomorrow and say, well, uh, we had to downsize. You got to understand. But when God is in it, I don't care how they downsize you, God is going to take care of you. You're going to keep what, you, what he gave you. He's not an Indian giver. Oh, yes. <laughs> he don't take it back. So you, you got to understand that. So I don't understand. You know, I don't know. Maybe people say, well, you've been, you, you, you're, you're a pastor, son. No, 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 no. Don't get that. But I had to stand on my own two feet. I'm, I am a tither. I am a giver. I am a church goer. I was not exempt from that. So you think when I get to heaven, he's going to say, oh, you was Apostle C.L. Long son. Come on in. No. No, it don't work like that. That's what you call entitlement. It doesn't work like that. It doesn't work like that. It doesn't work like that. So you got to, you got to stand on your own two feet. You got to make a choice. God has always given man choices. That's why some of them failed and some of them succeeded because of choices. One thing I learned too, because I've done it, you pay for your bad choices. I don't care. You, 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 it could be 10 years from now you're paying for it. You know, you purchase something you shouldn't have gotten pay for it because it gets taken and now it's on your credit now you can't so God got to so you got to God got to fix it anyway so why not serve him uh, I don't understand that see and, and I, I, will, I will guarantee you if after you straighten out things and know within your heart that you're doing the will of God that's when things start turning around for you see sometimes we try to do things on our own without God in it then what happens is you become this person that says, I did this. That's when you mess up. I did this. It is he that gives you power to obtain. He being God. He is the one that woke you up this morning. If you didn't wake up and you got a million dollar a year job and you can't wake up, you can't go to that job. If you have no breath in your body, no activity of your limbs, you got to, you got to, this is the time that we need to focus on God. You got to focus on him. Don't let nobody sway you. Um, the devil, that's his job. When you're, when you're at home, things come to your mind. You got to, you got to learn how to deflect those things. And I guess, I guess, I guess this could be a lesson for people who said we go to church too much or people that don't come like they should. This should be a lesson. This should be a, what they call it, an eye opener. It should be. See, and see I, know, I, know, I know in the congregation, no one has said to me, Pastor, I lost my job or I'm not getting any income. What if, there you go, what if you lose your job? What if you lose your income? What if? Then who you going to fall back on? Who? So you got to serve God with everything you got. Everything you got. You got to do that. 
Matthew 6 and 30. Seek ye the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things will be added unto you. There's nowhere in that scripture where it says it will be taken from you if you're doing the right thing. People got to understand that. You got to understand that. I don't know why I'm talking so smooth and casual tonight. <laughs> but that's, that's what you got to do. Sometimes when you go, you go, uh, people don't hear you, but I'm, I'm looking, you know, I'm looking, I see comments and stuff. You know, you got to do that. You got to put God first. Some of us have even forgot to ask God to save our families. That's important. Very important. There's nothing like the whole house coming to church. Nothing. Nothing in the world. Nothing in the world. So you got to pray that God will fill your family. And I'm telling you, I'm telling you, let me, let me give you a little inside trading. This is the time to ask God to do it. Yes, I'm telling you. Again, I can keep going back. In the last days, I'm going to put out my, flesh, out my, out my spirit upon all flesh. God is going to do it. You might be saying, well, pastor, I've been asking God to fill my husband for so long, my wife, my children. Listen, your accent has not been in vain. Keep asking. God is going to do whatever you ask in his name. Yes, sir. He will do it. He's going to do it. I don't care. I don't care how long you've been praying for it. He's going to do it. Again, economically, it doesn't seem like uh, I, can, I can obtain anything. But God doesn't worry about uh, what's going on in the economy. I have saints here now. Uh, Sunday, Sunday, Minister Mike. And his family, uh, in July, they're moving into their new house during the pandemic. How? How? Because we serve a God that's able. Uh, uh, people, uh, uh, Sister Cheryl, get, getting a job during the pandemic, six-figure job. That's how he works. Let me go back to Mike. I'm not finished because his wife, listen. They are, I will say this, and I will say it proudly, they are one of the most dedicated families in this ministry. Yes. They live a little far out, but they're here for everything. And some people live around the corner and won't even come to church. And they, they, because they become comfortable, they think they have things that they need. God can snatch them from you. Oh, let me check, let me check that. All he has to do is do nothing. He, see, the reason why his family is blessed because they are tithers, they are givers, not only of their money, but of their time. Of their time. People got to understand, they think tithing is always money. No, 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 no. You can give it through your time, your dedication to ministry, and God will bless you. How in the name of God can his wife not have a raise for 15 years on her job, and then all of a sudden... All of a sudden, she wakes up. I remember my daddy said, you can go to bed poor and wake up rich. How? 15 years, no raise. And then they said, you know what? We want to give you a raise. So what we're going to do is for every year we didn't give you a raise, we're going to give you a 2% raise for those 15 years. And uh, people trying to calculate it, but I tell you what, go ahead, try to calculate it, but it's a whole lot. It's a whole lot. It puts you in another bracket. Faithful, faithful, House Lens, Vice President. The President came to our service. He wanted to see what you was talking about, what you was all about. Now, suppose you would have went and act like a fool, picking up drinks and margaritas and messing around and stuff. He wouldn't have saw the God that was in you. That's right. He want to come back and bring his family. He wants his daughter to sing at Scripture Cathedral. That's right. Yeah. That's right. So my point is, so God will put you in a place where people will help you and you don't know, they don't know why. I know that's a fact. I've seen it happen. I've seen it happen. I've seen things accomplished through somebody, bankers and everything. After it's accomplished, they gone. Because God placed them there for you for that time. But you got to be faithful. You got to be faithful. You got to be a giver. You got to understand that. You can't. See, too many people, we don't get into this, this thing where uh, 
uh, I don't like this person and I don't, man, no, 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 no. That time is over. It's over. And I'll say, I'll say this. My wife sang a song, if God doesn't do anything, anything else, he's done, he's done enough for me. God's been good to me. And good doesn't mean what I got. Doesn't mean what I got. That's just the extra. And I understand that. So if you got a one bedroom house, you better praise him. <laughs> if you got if you got the the ability, somebody I don't know I don't know who it was. It might have been you, Sean, where the man that uh saw the car coming by he had to catch the bus. You remember that? And he was like, man, I wish I had a car, but he catches the bus. Then he saw, when he was on the bus, he saw a man riding a bike. Yes, and the person on the bike was like, man, I wish I could get on the bus. But the person that was on the bike, then he saw somebody walking. Yes. You got to be thankful. Yes. In all, you got to be thankful. Everything God does, you got to be thankful. There are too many unthankful saints, not people, saints. Some people don't even tell them thank you when they go to eat. Don't tell them thank you for waking you up this morning, watching over your family. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for another day. Because it could have been the other way. But God made the enemy behave. And don't, listen, let me tell you something. The enemy has been the God about you. Oh, my God. Let me get them. And this is the thing. The reason why he hasn't let him loose on you because he know you ain't strong enough yet. Mm -hmm. Ask Job. That's right. There's a hedge. Now, now I mean, I, I, man, I, I'm telling you. I know. I, I, that's why. That's why. The enemy been to let me, let me, let me. See, this is the thing. I'd rather for the enemy to have to go to God and ask him. Instead of me just giving up anyway. Some people gave up. I'm going to do. No. No, 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 no. You said it be ye steadfast, unmovable, always about. Because your labor is not in vain. See, some people don't want to labor. You got to labor. You got to labor in ministry. You got to labor. Then God gets you to a certain area. And it's, it's like it's not labor no more. You, you got to understand that. You know, like a, you, you exercise, you play, y'all play college ball, basketball, football. It's so, you had a goal. You got to that weight. It was nothing after you got there. So when you're serving God, that's the way it gets. Once you get to a certain point, it's like, oh, you know what I'm saying? You, and then, you know, I mean, I, I don't know. Some people, uh, they become fanatics for exercise. You got to understand where I'm going. They, no matter what, they're going to exercise. That's how you got to be about God. No matter what, I'm going to do this. No matter what. I never understood how some people could get up every morning at 4 o'clock, go to the gym, go home, take a shower, and then go to work. I mean, that's not me. I don't know how they do it. It's tough. But you got people that do it. And look, I'm a big guy. The hardest thing in the world is dieting. I'll start out. <laughs> <laughs> but it's hard. But I will say this. When, it's, can't, when it comes down to the things of God, there's nothing that's going to stop me from trying to accomplish what God wants done. Whatever he wants done. Here I am, Lord, to use me. Send me. And I'm not going to go to the wrong place. Some people that ran from, from Scripture and went to the wrong place. And, and he, when he gets you right, you're going to run back. Who was that, Jonah? <laughs> You're going to run back. I'm trying to tell you. And I'm glad God is a God. See, see what you got to understand. In life, the worst thing, all y'all fathers, right? The worst thing you could ever do is not leave an inheritance to your children. That's the worst thing you can do. Now, I'm going to tell you why. Because our other counterparts, that's how they build wealth. They leave an inheritance. I don't want to leave this world. I don't want my daughter to have to go through the stuff I went through. My father didn't want me to go through the stuff he went through. I'm glad that I inherited a church. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. yes, sir. 
that he built. If you go through the Bible, there was inheritance all through the Bible. It wasn't no starting from scratch. Now, don't let me start preaching up in here. It wasn't. If you know your Bible, if you know your Bible, pick it up and read it. You will find how it was always something passed down. Uh, uh, Abraham passed it down. Generational stuff. All y'all want is the generational curses. I want the generational blessings. Yes, sir. And if you are in a generational curse, you got to stop it today and say, I'm breaking it. Yes, sir. Yes. I'm done. I don't know. I'm, 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 on the, I'm somewhere else now. Somewhere else now. Glad I got an inheritance. You dying and they got to go fund me. No. No, 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 no. Get your stuff right. See, people don't like when you talk like this, Saudi. You got to get your stuff right. That's what you got to do. Leave an inheritance. You, you'd rather have the newest cell phone than to pay your insurance. Sometimes you got to cut back to move ahead. Come on, move ahead. That's what you got to do. No, I said it again. You want me to say it again? You got to cut back to move ahead. You got to be wise, good stewards. Good stewards. Good stewards. That's what you got to do. I'm done. But don't forget Sunday, 11 o'clock. 11 o'clock. Make sure you're here at 11 o'clock. We're going to pack this sanctuary. We're going to praise God. The glory of God is going to come into the place. Somebody's going to be healed. Somebody's going to be delivered. Somebody's going to be set free. Somebody's going to be filled with the precious gift of the Holy Ghost. Speaking in other tongues as the Spirit of God gives utterance. That's what's going to happen. And don't forget... Drive through prayer Sunday, uh, 10 a.m. until 12 noon, right here at the Scripture Cathedral, 7610 Central Avenue in Landover, Maryland. If you need prayer, continue to dial 202-483-9400. That's 202-483-9400. Make sure you do that. If uh, you get an answering device, just leave uh, your request in extension 202 and make sure you ask for some of the anointing oil. Um, also, um, something I just, oh, the book, How to Get Rid of Stress Before Stress Gets Rid of You. Dial and get this book. Some of you uh, that are Scripture Cathedral members, you need this book. Don't stress out. When you, you, you gotta look up, see God. Your help is on the way. So. And tonight, I want everybody to plant a seed of $16. $16. $16. Plant your seed. $16. $16. Get it together. I don't care who you are, where you are. Everybody get $16. Plant that seed. Plant a seed. This is Thursday night. If you were here, you'd be given. I just told you. Um, on the other side, you got to be careful because some people, if you keep doing it virtually, they're not going to give nothing. They not. Some people say out of sight, out of mind, but you better listen to your mind of God. You better listen to your pastor. Church has to go on. Church has to go on. See, when I'm talking like this, I'm not talking just about Scripture Cathedral. I'm talking about ministries all over the, over the country. Got to go on. Got to go on. So make sure you do that. You can do it by uh, Cash App which is dollar sign SCM Church. That's dollar sign SCM Church. Or you can go to our website, www.scm.church. Go to the button that says, uh, the tab that says donate or online giving. And you can put in the amount that you would like to give. Uh, everybody, $16. And remember this. It shall be well, because everything is going to be all right. We'll see you on Sunday. Peace.